Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be visiting Mysterious Vesta. The object that some see as the largest asteroid in our solar system, but some scientists think that this might also be the leftover from the early solar system, so-called early protoplanet. In other words, an object that could have been a planet. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> So this is an object that we actually got to visit and what you see on the screen right now is a very realistic recreation of what Vesta really looks like. The Dawn mission uh, that is still actually active and is currently orbiting around Ceres visited Vesta first. It was here for about 13 months, just over a year, and it got to investigate not only the surface features of Vesta but also analyze some of the um, chemical compositions that were detectable or visible from the orbit. Now, interestingly, we've actually discovered some really unusual things about it. And today, a lot of scientists, specifically the main investigators behind uh, Vesta, think that this can even be classified as the smallest terrestrial planet in our solar system, for a very interesting reason. Even though it doesn't actually look round, as a matter of fact, you can see that it's um, kind of uh, bulgy and has unusual features on the surface. All in all, um, Vesta actually meets the requirements for a terrestrial object. It actually contains a lot of layers um, and a core very similar to a typical planet. Ceres, on the other hand, which is larger and more massive than Vesta, doesn't seem to qualify uh, or at least meet the same prerequisites. Now let's start with some of the facts behind Vesta. So what do we know about it? What have we learned about it? And what does it actually look like? This object is about 525 kilometers in diameter. Uh, that's uh, much smaller than our moon even. As a matter of fact, it's one of the smaller objects out there, but it is very large by asteroid standards. It also has some unusual features that you actually see on the screen right now, right in this region you'll see that there, it has these unusual lines. Now, for the longest time, scientists didn't really know how to explain this, but today, a lot of people think that th these are, or these were formed uh, due to the expansion of the asteroid as it cooled down. We think that it used to be much hotter. As a matter of fact, it was most likely very hot with an actual hot core in the middle. And this was formed because of um, what it used to have on the inside. It used to have a lot of unstable aluminum, which actually decomposed and created a lot of heat. And this aluminum, surprisingly, came from a nearby supernova. So Vesta, early on, got to absorb quite a lot of metal that then decomposed on the inside, created a molten core and a molten insides. Uh, it may even had magnetosphere because of its high velocity and because of its iron composition. And guess what? It also had liquid water. The scientists even found signs of liquid water on the surface. Now, all of this is very unusual because this is not what you expect from a typical asteroid. And because of this today, a lot of scientists don't really see Vesta as just an asteroid, but they actually think this was a protoplanetary object. Basically, this is what an early planet looks like. This is a baby planet. Vesta could have become a planet if it wasn't for its neighbor, Jupiter. Jupiter grew too fast, too quick, and too massive, and prevented Vesta from forming into an actual planet. As a matter of fact, uh, Jupiter most likely kicked out a lot of the material from the uh, asteroid belt that would have eventually turned Vesta into a planet. And in tomorrow's video, we're actually going to um, reconstruct this. We're going to pretend that Jupiter didn't kick out a lot of mass from the asteroid belt. We're going to build Vesta as a planet. But for now, let's actually land here and let's talk a little bit more about the uh, unusual features we've discovered here. So first of all, if you actually look at Vesta from, I guess, this angle, maybe this angle, uh, you'll realize that it's kind of squished on two sides. As a matter of fact, right here, there's a really l large sort of a protrusion. Um, this is a crater. This is one of the biggest craters in our solar system. And this was uh, formed by a very large collision that Vesta experienced two uh, billion years ago. 
and it most likely created most of the asteroids we get from Vesta today. A lot of asteroids that we get on Earth are actually from Vesta, and they were created by this really large collision with an asteroid early on. Another collision in, uh, happened about a billion years ago um, and created a lot of other mountainous features here. And uh, because of all of these collisions, Vesta actually has one of the largest mountains in our solar system, only seconds largest um, after the one on Mars. The mountain is about 20 kilometers um, in height and it, it was formed essentially through a collision with a large asteroid that then resulted in a lot of volcanic eruptions. Now let's actually fly through uh, some of the surface here just to see what it all looks like a little bit close by. And we're also going to talk a little bit more about the history of Vesta. And now that we're landed on the surface, which kind of, as you can see, looks very rocky, we're going to go and explore uh, other regions of Vesta here. So let's fly through here and find out what all of this looks like from just a few uh, meters above the ground. Now, Vesta is a really old object, uh, but it was also discovered a long time ago, specifically in 1807 by a person whose name is Heinrich Olbers. When he discovered this object, he was absolutely certain that this was a planet. And so for the first 50 years, um, Vesta and three other objects, including Ceres, were actually planets. As a matter of fact, we used to have 11 planets in the solar system. This was before the discovery of Neptune and Pluto. And later on, these were reclassified as asteroids. And today we are about to reclassify them again. And Vesta might actually get close, classified as um, the only protoplanetary object in our solar system. Because no other object we know has such an unusual formation and such unusual internal composition. It's also very, very similar to terrestrial planets um, in its density. As a matter of fact, this is one of the most dense objects in our solar system. A little bit less dense than terrestrial planets, but more dense than most moons, more dense than most asteroids. Um, and because of this, um, we definitely think that this is unique um, compared to Ceres, compared to other asteroids like Pallas, and compared to any other object in the asteroid belt. Now, previously I mentioned that uh, we have actually discovered signs of water, or specifically liquid water, on the surface of Vesta. And this is actually what makes it so unusual, because there are not a lot of objects in our solar system that have or had liquid water. Now, how could it possibly have water? There's no atmosphere here, it's really cold, the temperatures here vary from like minus 20 degrees Celsius to about minus 190 degrees Celsius. So where is this water from? It's actually from the inside. Right underneath all of this rocky material, uh, you can find a lot of water ice. And every time a collision like this one occurs, every time an asteroid smacks into Vesta, it liquefies the water, creating temporary uh, liquid water on the surface. And these flows are actually apparent in quite a lot of regions on Vesta. So we definitely know that there is a lot of water here. We know that there is a lot of metals. There is a lot of... Uh, rocky materials similar to the ones on Earth. And this is actually a really interesting object to explore one day. We definitely have to organize a mission to land and to drill into this object just to see what we find on the inside. It's also most likely filled with a lot of really, really interesting metals. A lot of them are probably very rare metals and um, quite expensive metals that we usually don't have on Earth. And because this object is so old, I'm sure we'll find a lot of really cool materials to mine here. So this would make one of the best mines um, in the asteroid belt if we were to ever land here. Now, because Vesta is so ancient uh, and because it's basically in a more or less stable orbit uh, in the asteroid belt, just uh, below the orbit of Ceres, it's unlikely that it will ever collide with anything in our solar system. But I wanted to imagine what would happen if actually Vesta did collide with, let's say, Moon or planet Earth. So let's try that. Let's uh, go into the Universe Sandbox and imagine a hypothetical situation where Vesta does actually come close to Earth and collides with it. And by the way, if you were to look at the orbit of Vesta in, uh, in our solar system, this is actually where it's located in regards to everything else. Vesta is here, Ceres is right behind it right now. 
and it's sort of between Mars and Jupiter. And as you can see, Jupiter is relatively close to Vesta and has quite a lot of influence or gravitational influence on how Vesta behaves. Um, now, we're going to imagine a situation where Vesta's orbit changes for some reason. And basically, one reason or another, Vesta approaches the location where Earth is and basically collides with both our planet and possibly our moon as well. So let's actually use the Earth-Moon simulation and uh, compare Vesta in terms of size with both objects before colliding it with them. Uh, Vesta is right here under the minor objects and you'll see that it's actually really, really tiny. This is how small it is in comparison to our planet. Um, it's basically the size of a large country in a sense, or a medium-sized country. And if you were to compare it to our moon, it would actually be significantly smaller as well, and obviously less massive. But it's uh, quite likely that Moon did ex experience collisions with objects similar to Vesta early in the formation of the solar system. And so for this reason, let's start by colliding Vesta with our Moon just to see what kind of a crater and what kind of a um, collision we create here. By sending Vesta toward our Moon first, right before doing the same for planet Earth. And so in about a few seconds here, it's going to have the collision with the moon and most likely create another large crater on the surface. Although it seems like because of the size of this object, the crater is going to be a lot larger than anything else that we presently have on the moon. So this was the moon collision, as you can see, maybe not as dramatic as I personally expected. Let's do the same for the planet Earth now. Oh, and by the way, as you can see, the actual uh, mass of the moon has not changed at all. Well, it hasn't changed that much. Mostly because uh, in terms of mass, Vesta is actually not very massive at all. It's um, only about 9% uh, of the entire asteroid belt, which also means that it's not even a hundredth of the mass of the moon. And the Vesta we placed in orbit around Earth seems to have turned into a miniature ring around our planet. Now, let's do this again, uh, but this time we're going to be crashing Vesta somewhere right here in the Atlantic Ocean between Africa and uh, North and South America. So let's do this again, and let's see how big of an explosion this creates and what happens to our planet as a result. Here comes Vesta. It's going to be colliding with... Oh, okay, it seems to actually be colliding with what seems to be Brazil. Or Venezuela, I'm not entirely sure where it's going to lead yet. And it might also cross this um, unusual ring we created as well. And here it comes. Very, very large object in comparison to any other asteroids we've collided with the planet previously. But it's going to be a pretty impressive um, sight to see. No, it's colliding with the ocean after all. Three, two, one. You can see the shadow approaching. And there it is. So this explosion, as you can see, will create a shockwave so large that will most likely cover the entire planet. And thus, very likely destroy most of the um, multicellular life on the surface of the planet within only minutes or at least uh, half of the planet. The shockwave is still kind of going here as well. It's basically um, reaching as far as Asia. And looks like uh, that's really it. So th this collision did uh, cause major destruction in the vicinity of South North America. But I, th I think um, most of Asia and most of um, Africa and possibly some parts of Northern Europe are actually just fine nothing really was affected here and you can see that there's still even plant life here in Africa despite this collision pretty much destroying most of the northern and south american life now interestingly um if it, if this collision does occur the earthquakes alone across the planet will probably destroy most of the human civilization that uh will most likely follow by huge amounts of dust in the air that will last for several decades that will lower the temperature of the planet and making it um, so cold that most veg vegetation and most uh, life on the planet will probably perish. But that's just a speculation and it's very likely that such a collision will probably never occur. The crater we created here is several thousand kilometers in diameter 
and definitely looks like one of the more beautiful creators I've created so far in Universe Sandbox. But anyway, that's really all I wanted to show you in this video, and for the most part, I really just wanted to show you how quite incredible this object known as Vesta is, and how little we still know about it. It is definitely a mysterious object, it's definitely an object that doesn't really fit into um, a description of an asteroid or a planet, so for all we know, sometime in the future we might reclassify this as a very unique protoplanetary object that seems to be the only one left in the solar system. Other than that, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and uh, maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me make better videos and purchase better equipment. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're going to talk a little bit more about what if Vesta actually did become a planet and try to recreate planetary object known as Vesta. Space out and as always, bye bye.